In today's video I'm going to be showing you guys how to do some quick stylized rotoscope animations in Adobe After Effects with no plugins or presets. Let's begin. Hello everyone, my name is Elliot, also known as Eliano, and today we're going to be doing a little follow-up to one of my previous videos where I showed you guys how to create rotoscoped goal celebration animations in Adobe Animate. And thanks to everybody who has watched that video and enjoyed it, we're now having over 10,000 views, which is unbelievable. But a lot of people have been leaving comments and sending me messages simply asking, why didn't I simply create these animations in Adobe After Effects? So I've decided to challenge myself and show you guys how I created this animation of Erling Haaland doing a goal celebration with no plugins or presets. Step one, bring in your footage. So firstly, you're going to want to import your video file, ideally with it already being cut to the section you want it to be, but if you haven't, it can quickly be edited in After Effects. First, double click on the footage in the project tab here, and your footage will appear on screen in this tab here. Mark the beginning and end points using these icons, and then simply drag your video file in the project tab to this icon here. This will then place your video into a brand new composition matching both the size and frame rate of your original footage with it already being cut based upon where you marked your in and out points. Step two, using Roto Brush to create your layers. Now that we have our footage into a new composition, we're going to be colouring in each section of the player on individual layers, similarly to how this was done in my previous rotoscope animation tutorial. To start off with, we'll go for the shirt. First, duplicate your footage by clicking Command plus D, and then with the layer highlighted, click the Enter button to rename the layer. In this case, I'll call it Shirt. Then double click on your shirt layer and it will appear in a separate window tab to your composition. You're then going to want to click on this man with a paintbrush icon to bring up your roto brush. And essentially what we will be doing is highlighting each section of our footage which we want to cut out from our original clip using the roto brush, which the effect will then be applied into our composition. So with the brush being green and clicking over a section, that part of the clip will be maintained whilst the rest of it will be deleted. To better see your edits of your footage, you can use these options here, which will show your cutout footage with an alpha channel, a semi-transparent red overlay, or an outline over your original footage. I like to switch between the red overlay and outline personally whilst using the roto brush. To erase any highlighted areas, you need to hold down the Alt key, which will turn the brush from green to red, and then whilst clicking over footage, that highlighted section will be erased. In theory, once you've drawn over the section you want to highlight, you can click the spacebar and it should, hypothetically, highlight that section on every frame of your footage. However, with footage like this where there is a lot of movement and the camera zooming in and out, and also the footage is only in 1080p, this is quite difficult. So for the majority of this clip, I went through frame by frame and just simply highlighted each section again and again on every single frame. You can scroll forward in your timeline by clicking the shortcut Command and the right arrow key to move forward and Command and the left arrow key to go backwards. So once you've completed the highlighting of your footage using the Roto Brush tool, you simply just go back to your composition tab and hide your original footage layer by clicking the eye icon here. And then all you need to do is go to the effects tab and add a fill effect. Select the color you want by using the rectangle next to the eyedropper tool here. In this case, I'm gonna be using this goldish yellow and now the shirt layer has been colored in. Now all you have to do is repeat the process on every section you want to be a different color such as the shirt, skin, boots, socks, etc. And that's essentially the process. It isn't perfect but I'll give my personal thoughts on it on the end of the video. You can also add a colored solid layer to your composition placed as the back and use it as a background color in this case, I used a green, and that way you can see how well your Rotobush tool has worked on specific layers, and then you can simply just delete it once you're happy with all the edits you've done on each individual layer. Step three, final tweaks. Now to mimic my usual style, I'm going to create a new composition at 1080 by 1080 pixels with a frame rate of 25 frames per second, perfect size as an in-feed post on social media. Then drag your animation composition into this new comp you've just created, and I'll add a solid layer as the background of my animation and place it at the bottom of my timeline. And then I'm going to add an adjustment layer with the effect Posterize Time and change the number here from 24 to 12.5. That way I'll be halving the frame rate to make the animation look a little bit more cartoony to mimic the effect that's been drawn on twos. 
And I'm also going to add to that adjustment layer a turbulent displace effect to make the lines look a little bit rougher. With the numbers tweaked here, and with the adjustment layer also affecting the background, I'm just going to increase the scale a little bit so it doesn't roughen up the edges. And then I'm just going to add an expression to the evolution tab with me alt clicking the stopwatch here and then just simply adding the expression time times 100. And then I'm just going to add a noise layer underneath my adjustment layer with it set to multiply. Now this part is optional but to finish I'm just going to add a little smoke animation preset at the point where Harlan's feet land after his jump with the colours altered and there you go, the animation is now complete. Closing thoughts. Although I appreciate all the people who have been recommending this technique in using Rotobrush, for me personally, if you're going to be making these sorts of goal animations or celebration animations and whatnot, I still personally would recommend using an alternative method, whether it be using the Adobe Animate method that I showcased previously on this channel, or by using software such as EB Synth, which if you want to see a video where I go through how to create EB Synth animations in that style, please feel free to let me know in the comment section below. Now, personally for me, because I'm a sucker for the details when it comes to these sort of animations, I want to be able to add as many layers as I personally can in order to make the animation just pop out a little bit more using this flat coloured style. And unfortunately, that's just the main problem with this method. There were countless times when I was using this effect where essentially my After Effects project would just simply stall. It wouldn't bother loading from frame to frame and I think that was probably due to the fact that I had maybe a dozen different layers all trying to load up their respective roto brush effect at the same time and to say it bluntly it just ended up being a bit too hot to handle for the project. However what I would recommend is if you do want to use this process I definitely would say it's a good way to get a strong kickstart in animating larger sections. I personally wouldn't be doing this for um, goal animations or goal celebration animations. That being said, if you want to use this method, feel free. And thank you guys so much for watching. That is the end of the video. Um, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to click the like button as well as leave a comment on what you thought of it. And also feel free to hit that subscribe button if you want to keep up to date with any more future videos that go out on this channel. And as always, I want to say a massive thank you to everybody who has subscribed to the channel. Um, we're on about 440 subscribers or something, which is still insane to me. And if you have any other suggestions for tutorials you'd like to see me post, feel free, let me know, and I'll probably make a video on whatever you ask. So yes, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Cheers.